When you think about it, um, in the aftermath of Christchurch, you saw Australia put up very strong laws against, uh, you know, that would really target say things like Facebook. Uh, I think both you and Anya, you worked on Twitter, Anya, you worked in, in Facebook. From your perspective, what is the answer then? If, if it's not for governments, who can solve this problem in terms of making it, you know, not need your more constructive for the future? Well, I just want to say, I don't want you to feel about this, I'm sick of tired of people coming out of platforms and jumping on the platforms and criticizing them and actually doing something about it. You know? So the way I feel about it is my responsibility having been on the platform and not seeing this coming is to ask why. And what I think from that is the idea of waiting for Mark Zuckerberg or Jack Dorsey to suddenly have an awakening is bullshit. Like, they will not change as well as the underlying incentive to advertise it. They can't. Right? Now, they may reform at some point, but right now, waiting for Facebook to do something about this problem, I think, is naive. Secondly, putting power in the hands of individual nation state politicians is also a real mistake. Like, I remember interviewing politicians in my Shine Time days, and they said that Twitter, like the, the, the fundamental misunderstanding of politicians of technology right now is quite scary. So to give them the power to regulate, I fear, we need a World Health Organization type body that is looking after the solution in the same way that we have scientists you know, examining climate change, doing research about the polar ice caps. We need people like Jane empowered globally uh, with the kind of backing that they need to solve this as a world health problem. Don't put it in the hands of people like the Turkey and the Philippines, Trump in the United States, and even more benighted people closer to home. Let's think about fundamentally this is a, a global crisis and we can't just leave it in the hands of Jack Dorsey or even Leo Varadkar. Like, it has to be something more fundamental than that. Yeah, what he said. Um, but also, yeah, it is about the issue of Yeah, I think having a good education might be taken out of the hands of uh, platforms, governments, and having that overarching body. But also, I think what you've seen from Mark and Jane is another opinion that this can be solved alone by platforms, for technology companies, or media companies. This is going to take the biggest collaborative effort of our time from all of those companies, from journalists, from researchers, from data scientists, machine learning engineers, from teachers who are profoundly passionate like, of the idea of these literacy programs, but also librarians. Like, we do have to get creative in this space. When I was at Facebook, I used to be inundated with librarians coming to me telling me, I'm not sure it's correct, but constantly telling me, there are more libraries in the United States than there are Starbucks, but they wanted to help. They saw they had their utility in their communities. Why not use us in this moment when it comes to the, the power of social and technology and journalism? So yeah, it's going to have to be collaborative and it's going to take that massive overarching creative idea. Jane? Yeah, no, absolutely. I think there's already the beginning of science of it. So um, the UN has been looking at it. Um, myself and uh, a colleague, Ali Ecology, have been um, speaking uh, at a couple of events there, also the OECD. So I think a lot of the governments, and especially a lot of the kind of civil servants around this, realise that it's not actually something that can be solved by the nation state, or even necessarily by uh, by the EU, although a lot of people are kind of pushing some up in the in um, the DG Com in, in Europe. But yeah, I think this kind of multilateral um, institution in the UN and the OECD, the problem is then how much power does it have? So the World Health Organization has a certain amount of power, they can say things, but there's a lot of things that they can't actually do as well. So I think we need to look at that. And certainly a, uh, an organisation like that won't, for example, break up Facebook. And when you look at uh, the move to close messaging and the dangers of a lot of news now uh, travelling around on WhatsApp, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to actually need to be an American or a European regulator who's actually going to say, okay, Facebook can, can no longer run WhatsApp, it's going to have to be broken. And this idea of melding the, the back ends to make that difficult actually does have to stop. So you there's existing regulators who have to do this. If only we had to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Is that the answer? So when you think about it, the, uh, when you talk about the breakup, say, of Facebook or WhatsApp, there is that problem where, I mean, Mark Zuckerberg was talking about having a great more private social network, but we're seeing situations where I've heard people being massacred in Mexico or Myanmar basically because they wouldn't go out on WhatsApp. I mean, could we be forcing people down at all there? I think the problem is the migration. We are seeing a lot more people leaving social platforms to search for their news. I was just looking at a study that the FT, which says, you know, 
only 25% of these consumers think social media will be a channel for news in the future. Now, vast majority of journalists overplayed it, so it does see people moving to places where they're a bit more comfortable. They don't have a toxic environment around them, they know who's in the group, um, they have something in common with them, it's a smart group of people, and that's where the vectors are. So what we need to do, I suppose, is get activate a bunch of people who will say, you know what, Uncle Frank is sharing racist videos again. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to be the antidote. And, and I think this is what the project that, that Jane is, you know, like, just, you know, you have to say things in your groups of people to stop this. And my daughter is, is you know, daughter of a person who found an organization dedicated to fact checking is into conspiracy theories. Because it's served up every time the new landing is researched. It's the fake moon landing. My, my son the same way. So I'm desperately worried about her capacity to be a vector for truth and give her the tools to do this. And I feel that's part of the solution is um, they will go to these places. Um, you know, and it will be TikTok and it will be whatever new social platform some young person in the basement of Myanmar is coming up at the moment. The platforms will change, but the fundamental weakness of people being manipulated by these tech companies won't. So we need to give our children the superpower and the awareness to know, I can do something. I have agency. And that's what we need to teach our kids as much as I can spot fake news is, once I spot it, what am I going to do about it? I'm not going to sit here waiting for Uncle Frank to start sharing a racist video again. I, I think that's part of the much more proactive strategy we have to, to adopt. But we also need to break, and one piece of regulation I do agree with is, we need to break up dominance that particularly Facebook has. I can leave Facebook, I can leave Instagram, I can't really leave WhatsApp. And, and that's a fundamentally dangerous state of affairs in the world today. Final question, it's about a minute left, but in, will we look back at this as a time where something's going to consume our lives and to solve? Will we look back at this as a phase in time and a new year we to go through, will it still be something we'll be talking about in years to come? Yeah, the, the, the moment, the crossroads, the moment of correction. But I think this signals on there that the moment is here for people to take the control and the power of their hands. But equally from the industry that we know, the journalism industry, see, yeah, the power is there to reconnect, build those individual relationships. But it's going to move at the speed of trust. That's what we're looking at here. It has to be trust that's fundamental to everything that we do from here on out. Okay. Yeah, no, absolutely, I hope so. Uh, and it's interesting because the other huge global challenge is, of course, climate change. And you know, part of this is actually around disinformation, around climate change, and understanding that we can have um, power to actually demand that politicians need to take action. And I think it's the I think it's a kind of a twin thing. I think the two things work together. So I'm really hoping, for the sake of my children, that uh, yeah, we we act to have a, a clean information environment. And we have to have a, a cleaner climate environment as well, so both climates are improving. What I hope I have is we don't throw the baby out of the bathwater. The internet is a fantastic tool. It makes us smarter, better, it achieves progress. The democratic revolution of the open web was hijacked by platforms that didn't have our interests at heart. Let's remember this time as well, we took back the democratic potential of the internet. And we built new systems, and we look back in the 10 or 15 years where this was happening and going, wow, that was a dangerous detour. Thank God we all realized that social media is not evil, the internet is great, and we found a ways to actually live out that reality. That's what I want for my kids. Okay, guys, thank you so much for the final. Thank you.